Welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to study about the germination of pollen grains when they fall on the stigma of a flower. We will also learn to draw this diagram in a stepwise manner. Whenever pollen grains are mature inside the anther of a flower, these pollen grains are released. They can either fall on the stigma of the same flower or they can fall on the stigma of some other flower. And this process is called as self-pollination or the cross-pollination. During the release of the pollen grains, they are in the mature state, which means that they have a tough outer layer called as exine, a thinner inner layer called as intine, and the cell inside the pollen grain has already divided into two unequal halves. The bigger half is called as vegetative cell, also called as tube cell, because it will give rise to the pollen tube later. The smaller one is called as a generative cell and it will generate two male nuclei which will help in the fertilization process. As soon as the pollen grains fall on the stigma of a flower, a pollen tube is formed with the help of the vegetative cell of the pollen grain. This pollen tube then pierces through the soft tissue of the style and making its way through it, it moves towards the ovule. On reaching the ovule, it enters it through a minute pore called as micropyle. And inside the embryo sac of the ovule, an egg is present where fertilization occurs. Fertilization is basically the fusion of male gamete with the female gamete to form zygote. Here in this case, male gamete is the male nuclei, which is present in the generative cell of the pollen grain, while the female gamete is the egg which is present in the embryo sac of the ovule. We will continue with the process of fertilization a little later. But first we will learn to draw the diagram of the germination of pollen grain. For which first part that we are going to draw is this oval shaped structure which is the embryo sac and this fits into approximately two lines of the notebook. Above this structure, there should be at least seven to eight lines. Embryo sac, which is present inside the ovule, it has two cells at the bottom, which are called as synergids. Above the synergids, there is one more cell, which is egg or the ovum. Function of synergids is to protect this egg. In the center, there are two cells, which are called as two polar cells or two polar nuclei. These two polar nuclei and the ovum, all three, they are haploid, means they have half the number of chromosomes in them. At the top, there is a set of three cells which are called as antipodal cells. Embryo sac is well protected by three layers of membranes called as integuments. First layer of integument has a tiny pore in the center which is called as the micropyle. We will draw this first layer of integument up till the top but leave it here from both the sides. So there is a gap at the top in between these two layers. Start drawing the second integument from a little behind and leave it half the way up till here only. From the other side also we will take it up half the way and leave it up till here. To draw the third integument will start slightly behind from here and take this third integument all around the ovule like this. Ovule is present inside the ovary. So we will draw ovary around this ovule and the style and the stigma. To draw the style, we will leave this one line and then draw two lines which are exactly in the center of this ovule. The width of these two lines should be approximately one centimeter and their length is five lines long. At the top of these two lines, we will draw stigma, which is a wide sticky part of the carpal. So now we have drawn this stigma, style and ovary inside which ovule is present. We will extend this ovary at the bottom. Ovule is attached to the base of the flower with the help of a stalk like structure called as funiculus. We will thicken the funiculus. The attachment of funiculus to the ovule is here, but it does not stop here. It extends itself all along the ovule to secure its connection. 
the point where funiculus attaches itself to the ovule is called as hilum and this extension is called as raphe when pollen grains fall on the sticky stigma they extend a pollen tube with the help of the vegetative cell which is present in this pollen tube starts from here and it makes its way through the style so we'll take this pollen tube through whole of the style and bring it on this side like this pollen tube has to enter the ovule through this opening called as micropyle so we'll start a tube from the micropyle first and then join both these tubes with one another you can notice that i have rubbed a little part of the funiculus here to show that funiculus will be now in the background and we have completed the pollen tube now we will shade it and outline it to make it look neater and then we will shade and outline the rest of the diagram also inside the integuments there are certain cells present so we'll make those cells also and this part is called as new cells almost our diagram is complete these two are the male nuclei which were present in the generative cell so we'll make these two male nuclei and our diagram is complete we will start with the labeling part now on the left side we will label the three parts of the carpel that is stigma style ovary and ovule on the right side we will label the rest of the parts so this is the pollen grain and this is the pollen tube inside the pollen tube there are two male nuclei embryo sac then antipodal cells two polar nuclei one egg this tiny pore micropyle and this stalk like structure is the funiculus i am sure you could draw the diagram well now we come to the two male nuclei that enter the pollen tube these male nuclei start moving towards the embryo sac or the ovule both the nuclei they are haploid in nature that is they have half the number of chromosomes or they have just one set of chromosomes one male nucleus enters through the micropyle and it goes and fuses with the egg to form zygote so first fertilization occurs here now the second male nucleus it also enters the embryo sac and goes to fuse with the polar nuclei to form endosperm so this is the second fertilization the fertilization in which zygote has been formed is called as germinative fertilization while where endosperm is formed it is called as vegetative fertilization so we see that in plants two fertilizations occur and we say that there is double fertilization in plants first is germinative fertilization also called as syngamy here one haploid male nucleus fuses with haploid egg to form zygote which has two sets of chromosomes or it is diploid second fertilization is vegetative fertilization also called as triple fusion here the second male nucleus fuses with two polar cells as a result three sets of chromosomes fuse together to form a triploid endosperm so this is the double fertilization in plants during double fertilization zygote and endosperms are formed now let's see what happens after this double fertilization zygote formed during the germinative fertilization changes into the embryo which is the baby plant and the endosperm which is formed during the vegetative fertilization surrounds this embryo and provides it with the nourishment because endosperm is rich in fats oils and proteins ovule then changes into seed and ovary changes into the fruit so inside the fruit seed is present and inside the seed embryo or the baby plant is present rest of the parts of the flower that is sepals petals stamens and even stigma and style they all wither away and fall off so that is all for this video hope you have understood thank you so much